Welcome back, Zero K fans, to another exhibition match. It's gonna be Scuzzy and Yogstad versus Forever, and I know you read this. Who is apparently Forever Smurf, but I'm not sure how. Hey, everyone seems to think it's Forever Smurf. We'll see how Forever does, playing on two computers at the same time. Well, obviously not really. Anyway, get into the game. Not much more to say, it's gonna be on Wanderlust. Forever and is going for Kalupa Factory. I know you read this going for Air Factor and very quick Swiss. So figuring that Skazi and Yogstoth will have an air start, and they are right. Yogstoth is going for an air factor over in the northeast corner of the map, while Skazi in the center west side of the map on the low ground, going for Shield Bot Factory, starting with dirt bags, as has become usual since the dirt bag buffs of late. And about, I think two minor versions ago. I think 1270 was when, either that or 1260 was when dirt bags were buffed. And Skazi, or, I know you read this in Yogstoth, both realizing that they are going for air about the same time. Yep, there we go. Skazi does have labels coming up as well for the factories, but that is going to be well, information. That's it. The players need. So forever going over to the southwest side of the map as well, harassing Skazi a bit while. Yogstoth has been spotted as well. I know Yuri is just hovering over the base, seeing what's going on there, and strafing the fight on the ground just a little bit. But unfortunately for Yo I know Yuri this losing to Yogstoth's fighter. Well, that was a bit of a shame. Lost a bit of money in Yogstoth's territory. And on the other hand, Forever trying to raid a bit. Won't be able to really be that successful. Should be able to take out the Metal Extractor. Yes, that one Metal Extractor goes down, but the Glaive will die before anything else gets damaged. Still, that is a fair amount of raiding. Skazi and Yogstoth have not raided at all, so... Still, they're actually ahead economically. Yeah, they're slightly ahead economically. At the same time, Forever and I know you're really focusing a bit more on defense than they are on getting metal, at least. Or getting economy in general. So they are actually slightly behind economically despite the raiding. However, Forever coming in for another small raid and should be able to get rid of this. We'll see though, the, no, the strafing swifts do stop that glaive from dealing any meaningful damage. Which actually doesn't prevent these Swiss here, from, I know you read this, from actually finishing off that Metal Extractor. And finishing off this Metal Extractor and overall just continuing to harass. Because at this point, the economies are very close. So harassment like that would be effective. That would actually make a difference. Doesn't look like it's going to happen though. I know you read this just trying to assert some presence in the center of the map. Not sure how it's going to work out using Swifts, but that is what I know you read this is trying to do. However... Yogstoth trying to just defend that center or take that center back or take the center at all really. It's the center. It's what am I saying? Take it back. Now the player has taken it yet. Except I know you read this is taking it. But Yogstoth is trying to take it away from them and kind of has succeeded. Yeah, in fact Yogstoth now taking the center with the Sifts. Swifts are holding that as well as they can. I mean air units cannot hold territory especially well so it's not saying much. But I know you read this does manage to get rid of a couple of Yogstoth Swifts. And it looks like I know you read this does have the swift count advantage. Well, okay, let's just go with. Yeah, that's three swifts to six. So I know you read this having double the swifts of Skazi. Sorry, of Yogstoth and Skazi trying to come into Forever's little outpost here, but fails to do so thanks to the defenders. So Forever and I know you read this very quickly asserting map control, trying to take the south side of the map, which is actually a bit harder to do. The east side players have an easier time taking the north side than the south side. However, Yogstoth did start in the northwest corner of the map, meaning the north side is actually fairly close to the Yogstoth. But given that both Anir Redis and Forever start out in the center or east side, that does make the north side easier to get to, but still going for the south side instead and holding it decently well, in fact. At least it hasn't been contested too much, but Skazi's attempts to contest it so far have ended in failure. So I'd say that overall this is working out fairly well for Forever. Now I know you read this, hanging out in their base, not really attacking much with the Swifts, surprisingly not going too much for Bombers. On the other hand, Yogstoth also not going for Bombers, trying to, actually no, yes, yes they are going for Bombers, they're going for a Phoenix. Right after that last Swift going for a Phoenix, looks like they're going to try to do some surprise raids. Not really bother with trying to do anything consistent, because of course there's way too many Swifts in the air for that to happen, but lasting long enough. However, in trying to do so, I'm trying to at least assert a bit of air dominance, distract a bit, Yogstoth lost all their air presence Completely. All their Swifts just went down. Right now, there we go. That last Swift falling to the ground. And with that, I know you this has taken full air control. The skies belong to the blue team. That's going to give a massive advantage, which at this stage of the game, it's 
pretty critical. In fact, at this point, the Swiss can harass with near impunity. The Vandals are a slight concern, as are the defenders, but otherwise, not much. And honestly, the Vandals are still... That's... Okay, that that's money that could have gone into more ground units. So overall, I know you're this and Forever are doing very well for themselves. And another Swift goes down, although admittedly at this point there are only about half a dozen Swifts in play, so I know Eurydice has lost a couple. And Yogg now with their Phoenix, probably just going to try to bomb out the south side of the map. And yeah, they're in fact going for the south side of the map. Going to bomb that out. They'll get one shot in. And at this point, Forever, I know Eurydice don't have... They have radar coverage now of what's going on, but not much. And I don't think I know Eurydice... No, I know Eurydice not reacting in time. They might pretty soon, but it doesn't look like they are going to. In fact, they're going to repair a couple of their Swifts. Good plan, bad timing. Well, at least potentially bad timing. Thugs coming in to attack that south base. Well, the Phoenix will probably move in. Yep, there it goes. Moving in right then to get rid of the wind generator farm as the Thugs distract everything, and those wind generators going down. Half the wind farm does go down, and the metal extractor taking some heavy damage as well. And the Phoenix... Well, it wasn't able to get away with it. That, that did go down. But, set, but still, that was a decent amount of damage. Forever, I know you read this, regardless, having an economic advantage. This hasn't changed much. They are, however, floating metal. And I know you read this, switching to Shield Black Factory, which is now is a decent time to do that. Well, Skazi, not necessarily the best time, but it's an okay time. Skazi and Yogg-Sath, however, are... Well, actually, Skazi is more just building more stuff at the same time. Yogg-Sath does have a caretaker building more and more Swifts, and losing their commander just almost missed that. But yeah, Yogg-Sath just loses their commander over the north side of the map, leaving the north side very open for harassment, except for the fact that yogg is winning the Swift War. In fact, yogg now is the only Swifts, as I know you read this, has lost their Swifts to Vandals. Enough Vandals have been built. Four, apparently, but that's enough. Enough Vandals have been built to stop those Swifts, and as I mentioned before, I know you read this, is switching to ground, going for Roaches. Right now, just keeping them to try to stop Skazi and Yogg-Sath from walking in, but still, that's a fairly effective thing to do. Right now, Forever trying to take the north base. Does still have a decent hold in the south base, but mostly thanks to Lotuses, and these thugs are actually, well, they're lasting long enough, but the Lotuses do manage to pierce through the shields and very nearly kills one. 41 health left, and the other two able to get away damaged but alive. So no deaths on Skazi's side. And actually, Skazi has the best army at the moment, by the way. Partly Yogg-Sath not having their commander, but even then, Forever and I know you read this, both have their commanders. And that means 800 metal each for army size. Now, I know you read this has just switched to shield, so... Bit of time for that to happen, but still... Skazi has a distinct advantage, and one Roach does go down, but doesn't do much. Fortunately for it, does not get close enough to Skazi's forces. Second Roach, however, still only kills a couple units. Overall, not that effective, unfortunately, so not much to be said about that. Skazi is pushing very much ahead, taking map control. The south side is still Forever's, but Skazi doesn't really care about that. Skazi just taking the center, taking everything else, and she pointed out the center does have three metal patches. Everything else is two metal, but these three in the center are all three metal. So Skazi has a massive metal advantage from these center extractors, and is just having that advantage grow. Now, Forever trying to move out with this commander, trying to push back the harassing forces. But there's not much to really hold that, and Forever hasn't really been investing a lot in metal either. There's a lot of open metal here, but Forever hasn't gone for it. Now it's starting to go for it, but hadn't gone for it before, and that was some time that really could have had metal income. But, sadly, it did not, and also sadly, these gremlins are in the wrong spot at the wrong time. This warrior, however, should be able to run through, kill the defenders, and possibly the Lotus. It really comes down to the timing on the defenders. One of the defenders is fully armed, the other one is rearming, so this is the worst time. Kind of unfortunate, although the Gremlin could probably just... The Gremlin could fake out a few missiles. That might give the warrior enough space, but even then I don't think so. And Skazi going for fairly powerful assault. Two-pronged, the center assault not doing too well, the north assault gets destroyed by a roach. Did pretty well before then, but destroyed by a roach. Right as the center assault got right, wiped out by defenders as well. So Forever and I know you read this art. Well, I know you read this in particular. Is handling defense. Forever is trying to handle the forward push, and I know you read this trying to make sure that the home base is not getting destroyed in the meantime. And switching over to Thug Law Felon Ball. Now, given that Skazi is going primarily for bandits, this is a good counter. 
Really good move here by, I know you read this, that will help out a lot. However, Yogstoth does have quite a few Phoenixes, about three Phoenixes up so far, and nothing to really contest this. The Felon, I suppose, is about it for contesting this. And Skazi, about to lose the Bandits, but these... These Napalm Bombers, these Phoenixes, as well as Ravens coming in as well, I mean, Yogstoth is taking advantage of the fact that they do have air control. They solidly have air control. I know you read this is not even trying to dispute this anymore, and Yogstoth using that for some harassment, but ultimately will likely be using that to get rid of this felon and stop. I know you read this is counter to the bandit spam. Now Skazi, at the same time, going for roaches, so further countering that, and does have thugs of their own. It's not like they haven't gone at least halfway here, but they're going more thug bandit rather than thug law felon ball. And thug bandit isn't a bad way of getting rid of at least, well, a base, really. That's the big thing to get rid of. Now, Thug Law Felon Ball, like I said, does pretty much counter bandits. Doesn't really counter thugs. It's basically even when it comes to thugs. However, there is a lot of support forces here, and I know you read this coming in as Forever's base gets assaulted. Unfortunately, thugs are as fast as thugs are, meaning that I know you read this cannot catch up. And Skazi gets away with the harassment they managed to deal, slowly but surely chipping away at the south base and the north base, getting completely taken over by Yogg's Really not slowed down at all, but they lost their commander. Despite being the stage of the game where losing their commander is about a quarter of their economy, no real blasting harm as a result of that. So I know you read this, however, still pushing out more thugs, which is a good thing to do, keeping on with that thug law felon ball. However, not actually dealing much damage with it. In fact, moving to the south side of the map, not the best idea. It did kind of push back the thugs, but these things are slow. When you're dealing with slow units, you have to be very careful about positioning. You have to make sure that they can move where they need to go as quickly as possible, which generally means try to stick to the center. And use radar a lot, too. Admittedly, they are using radar decently well, but yeah. Use radar a lot and stick to the center. That way you can easily respond. It's like if you're playing midfield in soccer, you're there for rapid response. And, well, if you're slow... That's actually not the best thing to position to play. So that, that analogy was way off, completely off, because midfielders actually have to be quite fast in order to be able to get around where they need to be. But in a situation where a unit is slow, in 0k, they should also be in the center so that they can easily move. Actually, think of more tennis. In tennis, you want to kind of be in the center so you can easily move around the court in order to get to where you need to go, where the ball's going to be. It's like that with slow units. They need to be in the center so they can move around to respond to threats as they happen, as quickly as possible and as flexibly as possible. Unless, of course, you check them on radar and spot the threats coming in and move in to approach. Or you're having a gunship teammate who just ferries all your units around. That works, too. Now, Forever does have a scythe, which looks like... Oh, boy, it's gonna die. It's gonna die horribly. It's gonna come up to these defenders, it's gonna look all heroic, and then it's gonna get completely wiped. And similar, at the same time, we do have the Phoenixes coming in and trying to wipe this out. However... Well, they do, actually. They they succeed. Well, they succeed in wiping out the Felon, forcing I Know You Read This to retreat, or at least motivating them to retreat. In fact, they don't need to. I Know You Read This actually has the advantage in this fight. It'll come down to positioning, but really, these thugs here for for Skazi, they are at a disadvantage. They're going to be flanked out, too. In fact, they're all going to die if I Know You Read This goes for this. However, that is not what is happening. I Know You Read This instead retreating despite the numerical advantage. However, of course, we do have the Napalm Bombers as support. Phoenix is coming in as support, which does cause some problems as the shields go down and the thugs are all set aflame. Then, well, okay, I guess I can kind of see why I know you read this did retreat. He called that one pretty well, though I think there was there was a bit of a timing window where it could have worked out, but honestly, they didn't know where the phoenixes were, so I could see that. Because this one, I know you read this losing most of their thugs, having quite a few vandals to try to make up for this, but even then, it's just not going to be enough. And Forever Zeus not being able to penetrate the shields in time, getting torn apart instead by the thugs, or very nearly. Able to dodge decently well, but still getting torn apart. Skazi and Yogstoth just gradually taking map control. I mean, Forever and Aerith had a very strong start, but they're losing out, unfortunately. And Forever switched over to heavy tanks. Did see this before, but didn't point that out yet, because Reapers, that's what he's going for directly. They're going for Reapers directly, Reapers and Banishers. Going for the straight base assault. Probably going to try to get rid of Skazi's commander. In fact, with Skazi's commander at this point, up to level 4. Beam laser and basically heavy beam laser with with companions. Honestly, not sure what to say about commands most of the time. But the south side, more importantly, getting wiped out by phoenixes. 
really no consequences. Yogg-Seth is completely embracing the airplay. And forever, I know you read this. I think the fact, the, la the fact that they lost air control. I mean, I know you read this had air control and then switched out. And I know I call it a good play. And at the time, it's like if you could manage to keep the air down. But it didn't work out. And the fact that I knew this now lost air control means that Yogg-Soth has free reign to bomb everything and is taking full advantage of that. Being as aggressive as an air player should be, Yogg-Soth is dominating this game right now. This this line of Vandals it won't last very long. I mean, these bombers will come in and they'll they'll try. The Vandals will try, but they're just getting burned to death. Another roach goes off. This these are actually Skazi's roaches now as we get closer to Skazi's base. Setting them up for defense, and more roaches being spammed out. Or, not really spammed. But roaches are being sent out. And the thing is, the Vandals are actually getting distracted by the drones. I mean, it's more so letting... Letting Skaz and Yogg-Soth know where the Vandals are. The Vandals are behind if a rate of fire doesn't matter all that much. But still, they know where the Vandals are, and thus know where the Vandals aren't. As we can see, bombers being sent along the north side of the map to harass where Vandals are not present. Working out fairly well, too. And Rack here is trying to stop. I know you read this is advanced. I mean, it's counter advance along here. This is basically it. This really is all that forever. And I know you read this have going for them. If this fails, and it looks like it is failing, it's going to be probably game. And another roach goes off, tearing apart most of the vandals, and I think possibly a few thugs. No, just vandals. But five vandals go down to that roach. Although, well, really, there are still quite a few vandals in play. A dozen vandals right here. Very much spamming those vandals, which makes sense, but even then. Okay, now switching over to bandits, which. I guess the thugs works out, but yeah, there's really no easy way for forever. And I know you read this to push through, because as they push through, I mean, roaches just come up. Trying to deal with that becomes harder and harder, and an attempt to attack along the south side ended by ban. Attempted by bandits, but torn apart by the phoenixes. Not even worth commenting on for how brief it was. The Vandals trying to move in as well to defend, but unfortunately the Vandals cannot hit the ground. Well, fortunately for Skazi and Yogg-Stoth, because Skazi and Yogg-Stoth thugs moving in very strongly. Move out of it to team colors, but yeah. And another Thunderbird coming in to stop the next bandit raid. I know everybody is trying very hard to raid to the south, but not succeeding in doing so. And Skazi's commander finishing off the last few bandits that were not disarmed, though a few of them are in a good position to harass once disarming is over, but even then, doesn't matter. Bombers coming in, finishing that off, and forever and I know you read this, just basically out of a chance. Although, that was the perfect roach blast for I know you read this, saving their own forces right then. Silent because I was speechless, that was perfect. It's exactly what it needed to be. Saving the Vandals. I was about to say, Carbon and Vandals are totally, totally done. And then that Roach went off. That, at least, gave, I know you read this a bit of a chance. But even then, even with that, Yogg-Soth has so many planes. So many bombers that the Vandals are having a hard time dealing with them all. And the Roach is still holding Skazi's forces at bay. But those Roaches being built mean fewer Vandals, fewer harassment forces, fewer bandits. And the Roaches are being placed well and are lasting a while. Although in that one, not so much, unfortunately. One of the roaches does fail, and another roach also doesn't quite get it. Although it does actually manage to kill a thug, knocks it off off the cliff, down to its death, falls to his death. Don't see that all the time, but it's kind of neat when you do. And looks like, well, like I said, the north side is well known. There's no planes there, so Yogg's not taking full advantage of that, tearing apart the north side, and ultimately ripping apart... Mostly mexes, but that's the main target. Everything else is just there to stop the mexes from going down, and it did not do its job. At this point, actually, economies are fairly even. Skazi is ahead. Everyone else is around 20 or so. 20 metal and enough energy to hold it. Though I know you read this could probably use... Well, actually, no, it doesn't need more energy. The shield units they have do not require energy. Aegis, Aspis are the only ones that require energy. The Aspis here and the Aegis, which is the static counterpart, those require energy to recharge shields, and everything else doesn't. Everything else just recharges for free. Forever trying to move in some Zeus is not really a whole lot of coordination between Zeus and Reapers. So unfortunately, not a whole lot that can be done to move through. Admittedly, the Reapers can't easily move through either thanks to this Terraform. They... Yeah, they can't really move through. There's just no room. The Terraform is pretty much perfect. Those Reapers have to take the long way around. Admittedly, they could move in 
get here, but Dante being built up. Two minutes, we'll have a Dante to finish the game. No, never mind, not two minutes. Right now, that's the second Dante. This is the first Dante coming on the north side, and if Forever and Angry Readers don't surrender, then, well, I just have to call them their tenacity. But I don't think they have much of a chance. The Reapers are going in the north, are trying to tear apart the north side of the base. That is not going to work out. The Dante's tearing apart the Reapers, and the Thunderbird there to disarm them. Only managed to hit one, but even then, even two Reapers have a hard time dealing with the Dante. One alone is just hooped. Really no way to handle that. And it looks like this is basically going to be game. And the second Dante is about a minute away from being done. That first Dante still tearing it up. Tearing apart everything. There's really not much more to say. Not much for me to say. It's the Dante finishes it up. Felon with thug support going to also help out finish up the south side. And one last stand for forever. I know you read this before they surrender. Band is trying to come in, which... They will die before even getting a shot off. Oh, there we go. Yeah, wow, I was exactly right. They shot off. They move. And I know really this really doesn't have the units to deal with this. Have a lot of vandals, which will help if the planes ever come in, but the planes don't need to. The Dantes came in. Taking, switching to the ground, and that ground switch is, that's always kind of nasty. That's what the air player can do all the time. Switch to ground and basically make your AA completely useless. Got to be careful about when building AA, because if you build too much AA, well, this is what happens. Dante comes in and rips apart your forces because the entire game, yeah, they've been going for air and dominating air, but doesn't matter at this point when they have a Dante on the ground. So here's that last stand, and not much to be said. The Reaper along here just trying his best, taking as many thugs out as he can, but goes down to a felon. The Dante doesn't even get to it, and the factory for forever going down right after that. Dante tearing apart, well, caretaker nanoframe doesn't even matter, tearing apart the factory. He doesn't even care about the factory, honestly. That's not his concern. His concern is his copperhead. But now goes to the factory. Finishes that off. Burns up the ground, just to be sure. That factory goes down. Clickbot factory with sharpshooters coming in. Not a bad bet. But I think at this point it's too late. I mean, three or four sharpshooters would deal with the Dante without too much issue. But one sharpshooter will not be able to do it in time. Road's trying to help as well. Takes out a thousand health, but that's out of eleven hundred or 11,000. Not really all that much. As a small emergency measure, also, I know you read this, moving the Vandals to the north, just in case planes come to the north, but actually will be kind of helpful. They should be able to harass these cranes out, but at this point, harassing workers is of little use. In fact, will they even manage to pull that off? I don't think there's even a range. Nope, I don't think there's... There's not even vision of that. Oh, actually, okay, there is vision, but no. Vandals are not close enough, so yeah. Ultimately, despite some nice rose placements and... Everything that been trying to do this game forever, and I know you this will not be winning this game at this rate. Actually, they're not going to win this game at all. They've long since lost the game. They've been holding off valiantly, but now a second Dante comes in just to finish things. And that will be it. That'll be game. And another couple of roaches being set up. I mean, a lot of nice roach placements. But losing air control is the biggest mistake. I, mean, I know you this is doing a lot with the roaches, but that's not going to make up for the mistake of losing air control. Because that's basically what lost them in the game. All the harassment that was doable because of that. All the all the map control that could be taken because that harassment was possible. Because the counter harassment, like the harassment of the Oxdots map control attempts would not have really worked out. I mean, any harassment's just shut down by Phoenixes. So that's just done. So ultimately, air control manages to win it, which is actually a bit rare. I mean, I know a lot of people are kind of cynical. They do tend to say, oh, no, if you don't have an air start, you lose. We've actually seen a lot of games where air start does not win. And I mean, this game was one where both players went air, and air control did win this game. But it's been shown that it's not going to necessarily win all games. However, in this particular case, it definitely did. And I th think we have a surrender whenever that happens. But nope, not yet. Forever, I know you read this. Not throwing in the towel yet. Even though at this point, they really have no chance. They, they had no chance before. They really have no chance now. The Dantes are kind of in the wrong spot. Really, they need to just go south, tear apart the base, finish it all off. That should do it. That should just clean everything up after that. Forever, forever's already surrendered. I know you read this. It's still in the game. But honestly, should just surrender. There, This game is over. And I know you read this. Valiant. Valiant in their effort to stay in the game. I admire their tenacity, but it unfortunately will not work out in this situation. And it looks like some roaches went off. Were they? They were. I know you read this as roaches that were going off right inside their base, destroying it, destroying their own base. And with that, I know you read this surrenders. 
ending the game and not even a GG, just simple surrender. So that was it. Hope you enjoyed that. That is going to be it for me tonight. All the games for tonight. First game was probably the most interesting with the Comnap tossed into another commander. Although this last game definitely shows how you got to be careful when you switch off of air control to ground. Because if you're taking air, if you have air, you might want to be absolutely sure you really have air before trying to switch to ground to take advantage of your opponents going anti-air. Anyway, that is going to be it, like I said, for me tonight. So thank you all for watching, and have a good night, everyone.